Hi everyone and welcome to Castro Composite channel. My name is Javier Silveira and I'm one of Castro's technicians. Today I will also be the one to explain you the steps followed by our handyman Pedro. For this first tutorial we have decided to show you how to make a table with a carbon fiber laminate and then covered with a clear cast epoxy resin. You don't need to worry about the materials since we are going to write them down in the description box below. So let's get started. First, we use sealant tape to align the perimeter of the table and cover it with adhesive tape to ensure that the resin wouldn't touch this part. The second step is to prepare the mixture, but first it's important to remember to use the proper protection equipment before handling dangerous materials. Now, for this resin, we decided to use a mixing ratio of 100 to 40 of WWAS resin and B4 hardener. We stir the mixture until it becomes homogeneous, and to make sure it is well mixed, we put it in another container and stir it all again. Next step is applying the mixture to the table with the help of a roller. We place the spread toe carbon fiber on the table making sure that it is well situated. You will need to check if it is aligned, centered and there are no wrinkles. Once this is done, we then apply a new coat of the mixture and proceed to do the same with the stripes of carbon mat. The process itself is quite simple and repetitive so you only need to take a look at what Pedro is doing to know what you need to do at this point. And when this is done, we begin the preparation for the vacuum process. First, we remove the adhesive tape and add a breather to absorb the excess resin. We cover the whole surface with a vacuum bag and we use the sealant tape we mentioned earlier to stick it to the edge of the table. Make sure to leave a small part unstuck so you can introduce the tube that connects both the vacuum bag and the vacuum pump. Depending on the surface you want to work with, you will need to adjust the pressure levels. We then wait 24 hours before moving on to the next level. After the wait, we remove both the vacuum bag and the breather, as well as the sealant tape. and we sand down the surface to ensure that no particle is visible once we reach the final stage. 
we also vacuum to eliminate the residual dust from the sanding. We cover the four sides of the table with a sheet of polycarbonate using a silicone gun to prevent the resin from leaking. Then, with some modeling clay, we fill in the gaps between the polycarbonate sheet and the table and then remove the excess. The final part of this step is easy. Prepare the mixture again, paying special attention to the mixing ratio, and apply it to the surface of the table. Although the resin should level itself, it's always recommendable to check previously whether the surface is level. And if you want to finish more quickly, you can always use a spatula. Finally, we use a welding torch to liquefy the resin. This step will prevent bubbles in the final product. and let the resin cure for at least some days. Technically, this is the end of this tutorial. The finish will be superb once the resin is cured, but since we are looking for a better finish, we decided to sand and polish the table. We use an electric sander to eliminate the imperfections on the surface of the table. We begin with an 80 grit sanding paper and proceed to sand down the cutting edges. Depending on the finish you want to achieve, it will be necessary to gradually change to different sanding papers. For a more polished surface, you will need to spend more time sanding and use fine grain sanding papers. But the more roughness you want, the less sanding you will need. Great thing is that this particular sander can be controlled through your mobile phone thanks to its Bluetooth system. This is a slow process. Take your time. After this first stage of sanding, we change from the normal sanding papers to the matisser ones. We also add a little water with some drops of soap to decrease the resistance. This step will allow us to eliminate the marks left by the sander and to get a better and more professional look. If a matte finish is what you are looking for, that's it. You can stop here and add the final aluminum stripes. But if you want a satin one, keep watching. First, we use G3 Premium, an abrasive compound that allows us to both polish and brighten, and a high cut foam pad. Remember to operate the polisher at low RPM. Now, for the polishing stage, change from the foam pad to a lamb wool pad and also increase the RPM. Finally, 
we add the aluminium stripes. I make sure they are firmly attached to each other and to the table. You can use a girth to ensure it won't move while the adhesive is drying. And that's it, quite recent, right? Let us know in the comments below if you, have, if you have done something similar using this technique. And if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. And remember, don't forget to activate the notification button to make sure you don't miss anything.